And now, it's time for the Nelson Ratings. Witchy commentary by me, Mr. Nelson, on all things concerning life, culture, entertainment, and whatever else the cat may drag in. Earlier I did a Nelson's ratings uh, bit on the Fear the Walking Dead series where I uh, discussed that uh, initially it starts off well because it's explaining areas of the story we hadn't seen before uh, from the uh, original series. But uh, at this point it's just a pale copy of the original. And so it's not going to go anywhere further than that. There's really only one story left to tell and that's the story of the virus. But unfortunately they're not going to do that. So that's why I don't see much of a future for that series, but hey, maybe they'll prove me wrong, but I doubt it. Uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, Season 7 of The Walking Dead has been going on, and of course we've seen the uh, deaths of Abraham and Glenn, which was the big shocker for the opening season, uh, where uh, Negan, who is fully into the series, was only briefly introduced at the end of last season, where he uh, murdered the, the two men uh, with his baseball bat, Lucille. Now, uh, this was very close to the uh, comic book version, where that's how Glenn in that, in that version met his end. And, and since they kind of tricked us out with the death of Glenn earlier, which they kind of toyed with us like that, and uh, I know people who dropped the show after, after doing that, who loved the show but just dropped it after that little stunt. And uh, that was pretty bad when they pulled things like that. But, um, so it was a bit of a surprise that Glenn was going to die uh, in the fashion of the comic books when they'd already kind of teased his death and then it didn't happen. But uh, anyway, uh, that came and went and then that was a big uh, boost, to the big, a lot of turnout for that show. But then things kind of teetered down. Now a lot of people, I've seen articles where they talk about it, it it's really dark and violent. Uh, that, that's why its, uh, it's audience is, is dropping. No, that's not why. Uh, it's always been dark and violent. I mean, good lord, uh, the first episode, you had some half of a woman crawling in the, in the grass. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a very, very uh, nasty, monstrous show because it's about a zombie apocalypse. So uh, you're going to see things like that. And if that turns you off, then uh, you never watch the show. So that's not why people are leaving. Now, they're leaving because there's a sense that the show has nowhere else to go. It's the same problem I discussed with the other series, but uh, but with uh, The Walking Dead, uh, they had built up the strength of, of the characters that people loved, uh, they had a relationship with them, and there was powerful stories written about them. So you care about them and you want to see where it goes, but that's not enough to keep it going. You, you've got to have an end game in mind, I believe, of where you're going, because uh, uh, it, it's not a procedural like Law and Order, which is a type of show that could go on forever if you wanted it to, where uh, every episode is basically the same. It's just a new case and that sort of thing, and uh, the characters could be interchangeable eventually. You know, if if one drops, it doesn't matter. You get another detective, <laughs> and then like sitcoms and stuff like that, and and. But that's not what a show like Walking Dead is. These, uh, these series, these dramas like that, that uh, uh, have a certain point to them. So uh, earlier on, I remember uh, it was an interview with Robert Kirkman where he had originally thought about when they get to Alexandria and they establish Alexandria, that was going to be the ending of the story. Uh, and I think he should have gone with that. Uh, that's the only ending uh, possible here where they finally are able to establish some sort of uh, beachhead in rebuilding uh, human civilization. Now they got enough people to defend it, and they can outlast the rotting zombies when they're <laughs> eventually rot away. <laughs> and um, so uh, that's a, a, a pretty good way to end it. It is logical and sensible. I mean, I guess you could have you know Rick having a heroic death at the end or something like that. Uh, and, you know, eventually Carl takes over. One of those kind of type of things. But short of that, you're running into the real problem that Walking Dead is facing. Uh, the underlying problem is uh, repetition. And you're, you're doing the same things over and over again now. Uh, Negan is basically another governor. And once the Negan story is gone, well, we've got some other villains coming, you know, uh, if you've read the comic book series. And so Negan is more colorful. He's, a, uh, he's more fun to watch. And uh, the way he's being performed here on the show is uh, it's a treat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he's it's it's a joy to watch him, but uh, beyond that, I don't know, where else is it gonna go? Because uh, eventually, uh, you know, Negan's smart-ass remarks and everything and swagger is gonna wear thin. 
So, uh, in this particular season, it seems to be kind of every other episode was better, where, and the ones in between weren't. Uh, I'm just going to start with the, uh, the Trash Heap people. That was a bad one. Uh, these characters, they come out of nowhere... Uh, and if somehow the uh, saviors just missed them. I don't know how. Maybe just they, they passed by that, that trash heap and, uh, and never noticed anyone living in there. And Because, uh, uh, I mean, Rick just literally and his group just walk, stumble into them. <laughs> so, and, uh, but they're, they're this weird ragtag group of people that are, uh, I guess they're, I guess this is where the goths went. <laughs> I don't know. They're all dressed weird, and they even had their own kind of messed up language. And they're kind of living like a Mad Max, and this sort of thing—it's under—it's understandable that people would lose their minds in the face of the apocalypse and all that. But to this point, to get that bizarre, uh, I would have thought it would take a little bit longer than the handful of years that uh, the timeline seems to be with the uh, Walking Dead. So uh, it was a bit much, and I don't think it was handled very well. It just—it's kind of one of those things that's too stupid; it takes me out of the show. Um, so, yeah, the, the trash heap people was a bad one, and I kind of wish they just hadn't bothered. <laughs> but, uh, so that one went, and then we had, um, the story of, uh, Eugene being at the, uh, Savior's compound, and that was a good one. Uh, I was, uh, you know, they do these little character studies of one of the characters, and, and it's great. And, uh, it was well done, and it was interesting little maneuverings about how this, you know, total coward is able to outthink his uh, captors in a way and to, to achieve his uh, levels of survival there. And uh, at the one hand, people treat him like he's an idiot, but he's there because of his brain. <laughs> and they, it takes them a while to realize just that he's a lot smarter than they are. And uh, a lot of people were suggesting that, oh no, is Eugene turning against Rick? Or is he just playing Negan? Well, it's probably a little bit of both, because this is how Eugene has survived all this time. So, as far as uh, will he, you know, be involved in a plot to kill Rick or anything, I, no, I don't think that'll happen. But, um, so that's that. That was a good one, a good little character study of Eugene. Then we had the next one, which was going to be all about Rick and Michonne. And you think, well, the two big badasses of the show, you know, that'll be great. Well, no, <laughs> not so much. I, I, I mean, th there's a little montage at the opening of it. And I, I, I didn't really time it, but I guess it's less than a minute. And it pretty much shows you the entire episode in that one little bit. <laughs> that was enough, because it's, you know, they're going around, they're scavenging for stuff. They're, of course, looking for guns to fight Negan. And, uh, and they're making out and having sex and all that stuff. And you, it, it does all that in that first montage. And then the rest of the show is more of that with a few snippets back at home. Uh, you know, with Rosita and then Tara, which is eventually going to have to tell them about the gun she knows about and all that sort of thing. But uh, but there was these uh, like w w when Rick and Michonne they get to this uh, look like a uh, like a fairgrounds of some sort where the military had made a base there and it all went south because the zombies took over. But uh, Michonne walks in and it's like, wow, what happened here? Oh, you know, like like it's just the same thing that's happened everywhere. She's seen this a million times by now. It's just so out of character. I don't know who wrote that dialogue, but it was terrible. And it's just, it's, it's not her personality. And then again, the whole episode was a manipulation to get her to the point where she thinks Rick's dead, so she collapses and nearly gets herself killed by the zombies until Rick shows up. And says, I'm not really dead and kills the zombies, you know. And then they fight him off and all that. And then he has to give her the speech about, you know, this is more about you and me. And you're going to have to accept the possibility of moving on without me for the betterment of the group and survival and all that. And she realizes this is true and has to go on with it. I, I suppose there's ways that could, could have been done. Uh, because that's the whole point of that episode. Uh, but Michonne's already been through her baptism of pain and loss. I mean, <laughs> she's pretty much there when she first arrives. You know, with her uh, pet zombies there. Uh, so this, this, this it just didn't work. And uh, like I said, these are things that are uh, so bad and so foolish for a show that's been so great and had such uh, great achievements. To miss something like that is odd. But it's so bad that, again, it takes me out of the, the story. You know, I'm like, this is terrible. Plus the uh, CGI, there was a deer in the scene. Uh, whoa, <laughs> that was bad, too. <laughs> But, uh, 
but it was nothing compared to this dialogue that just didn't fit. So that was a bad one. Then we had Morgan and uh, his whole episode, which is another one of these character study episodes, and they did very well with it, and it fits in with Morgan's story and his uh, pacifist uh, path, and we're seeing the end of that because uh, he was forced into killing a man who had manipulated the situation and got a young guy killed who, uh, the first time I saw this the, the, the kid, uh, Ben, uh, I, you knew he was going to die, right? <laughs> you know, and Ezekiel, he was like his, he was like a son to him and all that sort of thing. So, <laughs> it's much, well, whoops. And and this was the other interesting part here where you had this scenario that's occurred before, but uh, it plays out again and again in situations like this. So, yeah, a bit of repetition, but uh, <laughs> this is uh, using it wisely in which uh, uh, Richard uh, tries to manipulate uh, the, the scene here so that the fight between the, the kingdom and the saviors can start because he knows it's coming. And he's right. It, it is. But his methods, of course, was wrong, and it was clumsy and foolish. And But it's one of those weird things where Morgan is ultimately ends up killing this man over this, even though technically uh, he was right, but he was wrong in his method. It was one of those, it's, it's those weird things. Like it, was, it goes back to, to Shane had a lot of... Uh, points that were right but of course he was the villain <laughs> and he you know his methods were wrong too and his ultimate goal of uh, his jealousy with rick and wanting glory and all that but uh here with uh, richard who was being a bit he, he did intend to die but when he didn't he was still going to go forward with the plan and uh was being untruthful there because he was probably never going to tell ezekiel what happened so Ultimately, it's just too much for uh, Morgan to take, and he's back to being a uh, badass uh, Morgan now. <laughs> so, uh, but the war is going. But he, but Richard ultimately achieves what he sought out to do, because uh, you know. And then Morgan, he tells the saviors, uh, "Look, we get it. Uh, we're gonna, uh, you know, we uh, we learned our lesson." And same old bullshit that uh, Richard intended to tell them to lure them in so that they can kill them eventually in the war to come so that one was a good one and uh that's what's what's left of walking dead is these uh performances and and what have you but overall uh and when you keep having weak episodes like they had in between these uh it doesn't look good for the future of walking dead because at this point i, I think they really need to uh consider the end game here because otherwise, all they're going to do is uh, they're going to battle the next Negan and next uh, Saviors. I mean, the comic book series have already introduced the Whisperers. They had that whole thing. And, and there's some interesting aspects there, too. And it could play out. But ultimately, it's the same thing. Oh, again, another group. And then again, another group. <laughs> oh, and this could, you know, it, well, okay, it'll go on forever. Uh, until eventually, uh, they build, they re civilization is able to be rebuilt. And uh, the, but battles like that will always go on because they're going on right now, and uh, that's humanity for you. And so it got it, you know, because uh, the message seems is always like, you know, even in the zombie apocalypse, still the most evil and dangerous creature around is man. You know, I, uh, well, yeah, I got that. You know, I don't need to hear that a million times over. So need to start looking for an end game and if you want to save fear of the walking dead you really need to look at uh making the virus a character in the story and exploring its origins and all of that otherwise there's no story left to tell so it's sad because i really like the show but uh but it's been too good of a show and it deserves to be treated better than a property that's going to get milked <laughs> to death until you know uh Rick is uh, skiing on the water, jumping a zombie shark. <laughs> we don't want to get to that point, do we? No, we don't. So, so far for uh, Season 7, there's three more episodes as I'm taping this. So I'm going to do an update to this one. But as it stands, uh, this season uh, gets three out of five stars. And this has been the Nailsin Ratings! Say, do you love the sound of my voice? <laughs> yes, me too. Well, you can hear more of it on my podcast, The Mr. Nelson Show on Radio Misfits. 
Dot com. New episodes posted every Saturday.